has a little bit of fuel but really not much at all. Welcome back to Low Method Classic and behind these doors here in the car barn I like to call the gallery sits a very special car. I mean there's several cars in here but we're going to focus on one of them today. It is a car that was probably ahead of its time. It has a lot of interesting features. It's designed by one of the big car design legends, Alec Izagonis, who also brought the Mini, among many other cars. Sadly, it wasn't as big of a success as I think it could have been. This version is even rarer than most of them. It is a Wolseley. It is an 1885S. So S means it's twin carved, has a little bit more power, and has a manual gearbox. But let's open up the doors and have a look at it. In today's video, we're going to see if we can wake it up and make it run again. Let's see what's hiding in here. So among all the Jags, there's a little Wolseley there. And there it sits. So this is a good friend of mine car. He lost the store space where he had this thing. It's been sitting for many, many years. And I told him, I have an extra spot you can store at my place over the winter. And he said, yeah, if you want to, you can film with it and get it running. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. And let's have a quick walk around the car. We'll leave the engine for last. We'll have a look just around it. It's, in my opinion, it's a beautiful thing, especially when you have the chrome on there and the grill. Everything is off the car at the moment. It got new sills years ago. On both sides and it's never been fully painted it's just in primer so it needs that paint job and um, some mechanical issues and then it can be back on the road at least here in sweden this is probably the only one in the country being a wolseley and also being an s there is the s badge because i've seen it before and i think it is a beautiful car some people didn't really like it at the time they called it the land crab uh, i personally can't really see the resemblance but uh, some people i guess can big doors and quite a spacious interior we're gonna set up some lights later so you guys can see a little bit better but very very pretty dash nice big back seat as well plenty of room plenty of ashtrays nice little fins here on the back beautiful tail lights and a pretty good boot actually all the missing interior trim is in here but actually quite a lot of space for not such a big car here is a bit of lights you can see that beautiful beautiful dashboard you get quite a good amount of gauges. The only thing really missing is attack, but you get a speedometer, you get temperature, oil pressure, fuel gauge, and a clock. It has, well, let's have a seat inside. It has radio there, eight track player, heat controls, the manual gearbox, and a little glove box over there. And overall, there's a lot of space in here, and these seats are very very comfy but let's go and have a look at that engine if you haven't seen one of these before you can basically think of it as a very large mini because you have of course the mini and then you have the 1100 which is like the next step up and this is an even larger version of that and later it basically became the maxi so up here you will find a transfers engine it's front wheel drive gearbox is below the engine where in the mini you would have the little a series here you have a b series so it's 1.8 liters or they're about 700 something cc so it's basically what is in an mgb just the other way around and in this s version you got twin carbs and some other things so uh, very straightforward here. You have the radiator here on the side and the air inlet to the radiator is in the wheelhouse. So very, very interesting how all that works. Um, distributor is right there up front, which is perfect for the rain to come in. 
coil is up here. Got the carbs there. But I think step one is to see if this thing turns over. I'll set up a camera and since this has just a regular mechanical fan, you can usually put your finger on the fan belt, turn the fan and see if the engine turns a little bit before we pull the plugs and go from there. Step one is just to make sure it's not locked up. I don't think it should be. It hasn't been sitting for that long. Yeah, that moved freely. I felt the bottom crank move. So I just put some pressure on here and pulled on a fan blade. Let's make sure we have some oil in it. And we do. It smells old, but uh, not excessively fuely, at least. Have a look in here. Nice and clean. Looking there, you see the top of the valve train. There's a push rod engine. Um, so you have little rockers in here, but I'm going to go get some tools. I think we'll take out the plugs. Just make sure that they're nice and clean. Also shoot a little bit of oil into the engine because then we'll put a battery in it and we'll crank it over and just make sure that we build oil pressure before we try and fire this thing up. And we should probably check coolant as well. Yeah, all filled up to the max. So that's really good. This is probably the remnants of some old block heater, I think. Yeah, there's a hose uh, heater there. So uh, it's definitely winter driven when it was used. And for some reason there was a stick of wood on there. Interesting. But let me go get some tools and we'll continue. Someone has marked delete, which is always nice. So take these off. And maybe I need an extension, we'll see. Let's see what cylinder one looks like. Looks not too bad at all. It's been running very nicely. We got Champion and nine Y seat plugs in there. So we'll put that to the side and then let me get the other ones out and we'll have a look at them all. Just got them all out and it's been firing on all cylinders the last time it ran and they look really, really good. So that is great hope. I just have a little bit of regular oil here. This is just uh, regular 20 W50. Just giving each cylinder just a little bit. This thing's been stored in bars and things. So just giving it that little bit extra lubrication. Because I want to spin it over on the starter and make sure we don't have any weird noises and also make sure that we're getting oil pressure on the gauge. And if the gauge doesn't work, then at least have a look up in here and see that we get oil. Next question is that I'm not actually completely sure about if this thing is positive or negative earth. Because there's a thing up here which says pool vende. Um, it's in, in Norwegian and for me that means polarity change. So it it gets 12 volts negative positive earth and it brings out 12 volts negative earth so it does seem like that's probably for the radio and i think this is a positive earth carb i'm going to double check that after a bit of research and a little bit of confusion i think it's a positive earth because it's supposed to be with the dynamo however Someone's put two positives on it. So this is probably an original cable has a plus on it and it's a bigger one because it would have a bigger um, connection on the positive. This goes to earth on the car so that's positive earth. However, someone has replaced the other cable which should be the negative cable which is then is normally the positive on a regular car goes to start it but they replaced it and has a plus on it. it's also kind of big but 
you can see someone's really screwed it in there all the way. So no weird flashes or anything. So you see, it doesn't really fit on there, but I think it must be like this. But the only really one way to find out is seeing if anything works on the car. So let's go inside and see if uh, anything at all works. We don't have any front lights, but maybe we can get some rear lights. So I think, yeah, we have a dome light there. And I guess indicators could be a good thing to try. Okay, they're not blinking. So might be something wrong with the relay. Oh, it just started blinking there a little bit. All right, there we go. We have an indicator. Look at that little cute indicator there. Ah, oh, this is, I don't know, there's something about this car. I think it's, I think it's a rather cute little thing. Okay, didn't want to on the other side. Let us see, the one thing we could try to see if everything's correct, we'll blow the fuse for the radio if it was incorrectly plugged in. Oh, that works. There we go. We got radio working. Now let's just make sure that everything is okay in the engine bay before we try and crank it over and see if we can build any oil pressure because I didn't see any of, I guess one of those is charging when those oil, those lights go on, but uh, who knows what works after so many years. Before I crank it over, I just want to make sure that we don't have anything living in here, which would, um, go into the carbs, into the engine, and just ruin something. Hmm. Let's see. Gasket, gasket out of the way. Can I just remove the top? We have to remove the whole thing. I don't think the whole thing has to come up. Uh, it's connected with a little spring down here. Let me get that off. There we go. That is really nice and clean looking down there. I think we're going to remove these gaskets just so they don't get sucked in anywhere. Definitely have some new fuel line over there. So it has been tinkered with. The one thing the owner told me is the last time they had it running, he had a really hard time starting it. I think it was maybe the choke mechanisms on the carbs. So maybe we should just pull the dash pots later and lubricate up all that so everything moves nice and freely. The one thing I don't know, don't know that much about these cars is, does it have an electric pump or a mechanical one? Because I haven't heard anything want to tick into life at all so hopefully it's mechanical uh, i'm gonna look around a little bit see if i can find a fuel pump or uh otherwise we have to do something about that but we're also gonna see if this thing cranks over i found a mechanical fuel pump right down in there so hopefully that thing is working and uh, i can't really see if there's a manual prime on it i don't see one but that's a good thing that we are cranking it over a little bit because then we can make sure that we get some fuel up to the carbs. So let's go inside. I'm gonna set you guys up so you can watch the engine and we'll see if this thing cranks over. All right, let's see if it cranks. I've cranked it a little bit more and it's cranking faster now, so that is really good. And I see some oil up on top of that valve, so I think oil is going around it. I haven't seen anything on the gauge yet. I think it is a not a mechanical gauge, but um, not 100% sure. 
we can crank it a little bit more it's not gonna do any harm with the plugs out and see if we can get any life out of the gauge at all and also see if we see any more oil up there yep cranking a lot faster now So it definitely cranks over really well. I don't think that we have any functioning gauges, sadly. And this doesn't light up either. I'm gonna look for a fuse panel, see if I can find if there's a, a simple fuse for these things and maybe get some life from the instruments. Slowly losing daylight here, but I want to get a couple things done before I call it a day. I went through the fuses, they're over there under this cover. They all seem fine. So nothing's changed there. I still have any um, warning lights on the dash. I have figured out that the uh, instruments, they are electrical. So you got temperature sender over there and down over there you have the uh, oil pressure. I have, however, noticed that if I turn, it's very dark, but you guys are gonna be able to see what I mean. If I turn on headlights, I do get, they turn on. So that is something at least. And I do get the main beam light to work. So I think earth and everything like that works in there. It's just something else going on. But I thought, let's just see if we have spark. So I grabbed one of these universal spark testers, however, I couldn't get the end to go into the plug wire like it seems really tight and I don't want to force it. So I've done the old school thing. I put all the plugs in except one and laid it up across here. Hopefully we get a good connection. So let's crank it over. I'm going to set you guys up so you can see if we have a spark or not. Turn off the main light. It's going to be dark for you guys, but hopefully we will be able to see the spark down there. So let me go inside the car and crank it over. fell over there but I saw it at least spark for a little bit let's just try and get that back onto there somehow see if we can replicate that oh, I'm not getting a good connection again but I definitely saw a spark before It would be great to have a helper when doing something like this, but okay, maybe that's going to work. All right, so that sparked several times. At least we have spark. It's the next day and we have a little bit more light. I just put that plug back in, so that's ready to go. And I loosened this fuel line here, which comes from the fuel pump up here, and it's completely, completely dry. So um, either the fuel pump doesn't work or it just hasn't pumped up any fuel yet. I grabbed the keys here. I thought we'd have a look in the fuel tank. See, this should be the right key. There we go. Very interesting little fuel tank. Um, Smells of fuel, but doesn't smell terribly old, not really fresh, but doesn't smell varnishy. So I think what we're gonna try is backwards feed the fuel system. I have some fresh fuel and we'll put that with a little syringe or something down here. Cause sometimes if you prime these pumps uh, from the other way, you can get them to start sucking fuel from the tank again. But while I do that, I thought we'd have a look inside the carbs. The owner said it was difficult to start the last time it ran. And I'm wondering if that is maybe because the choke wasn't really working as it should. So the choke does two things. It lowers the, the jet and raises the idle a bit. So I thought we'd take these off and just make sure the pistons aren't stuck in the dash pots as well because that will cause issues. 
I can I can sort of move them but it doesn't hurt just to take this off and then maybe shoot some WD-40 down in there and watch that they move when we pull the choke cable. So let's remove the dash pots. When you're dealing with SUs, it's very important not to mix parts up because the pistons are machined to fit each dash pot. Uh, so keep your parts separate and make sure you put everything back in the right way and don't over tighten anything because all the threads and everything are quite delicate when it comes to these old carbs. So you see that was stuck a little bit in there. Not too bad, but just a little bit. Get the spring in there. Put this to the side and then we'll have a look at the jets in there. That doesn't look too bad. Pretty nice and clean. They're at the same level at least. I'm going to give them a little bit of lubrication, let that sit for a while, and then we can work the choke mechanism from inside the car and just make sure that both of them go down and that is an enrichment state. One thing we could also check, of course, is open up here and have a look at the float bolts, make sure that's pretty nice and clean. So that is also one way we could start it. We could just fill the float bolts. But I think we're going to see if we get any fuel out of here at all. I'm going to backwards feed this, let that sit for a bit, we'll put a little bit of fuel in the tank, and hopefully we get fuel pump again. This is just some fresh gasoline in a syringe, and we're going to see if we can feed that into the fuel pump. Okay, it doesn't want to take any more, so I'm guessing the pipe is filled up all the way down to there. Put this aside. And we'll just give these a little bit of a squirt. And just make sure that. There we go. Alright, let, let this sit for a little bit, and we'll come back, yeah, maybe in half an hour or so. I've made progress in some areas. We still don't have fuel up from the fuel pump. I poured about five liters into the tank and then I put the bottle up here, removed the plugs, spun it over for a while and not getting any fuel up there, nothing at all. However, it did get all pressure. It showed about 50 on the gauge. So that's really good news. I heard the engine, so I changed note and then I was watching the gauge and it went up. So really excellent news about that. Carbs, I make a little bit of progress as well. I got this one freed up. Both of the jets are completely stuck, the choke mechanism part. But if you can see that, that is now moving freely. This one is still very much stuck. So I think I need a little bit of gentle persuasion, slight tapping right on there to try and get the free up, but I have sprayed a little bit more WD on there and we'll let that sit. If we get that moving, then we could just feed a little bit of fuel into the float bowls. Maybe it will fire up. Maybe uh, that will be enough to get some fuel going on the fuel pump, hopefully. But I'm gonna free this up and then we'll get the cars back together. No real result with that one is just, it's stuck. I got it to move down a tiny bit, but I can't get it to move up without taking the carb off. So we'll have a little bit of choke on that side and we can have a lot on that. There is a rebuild kit on the way, but uh, I thought we'd see if we can get it going anyways. I thought that if I were to feed into here, just gravity feed, not sure how long it would take until it actually goes up into this one. So I just crack open it a little bit and I've squirted a bit of fuel in there. So we'll put that back on and um, tighten that down. Then I'm just going to use this hose over here with that syringe, fill that up with a little bit of fuel, hook this all back together, put everything back on, and we'll see if we get this thing to run. Plugs are back in, all connected up. I have put everything back together here with the carbs, and both pistons move very nicely, so that's good. 
I just got this spare hose here and I thought I'd see if I can fill up that float bowl just a little bit. Yeah, I felt a little bit resistance first, but that sort of went away. I think it was, you know, needles stuck a little bit in the seat. But there we go. Should hopefully be enough fuel to fire this thing up. I am going to hook that fuel line back up just so we don't, by accident, start spraying fuel everywhere because you have the exhaust right underneath here so i'll hook that back up we'll connect up the battery and see if this thing fires up maybe we'll need to dribble a little bit of fuel down there to help it out but uh, hopefully with one choke working we should get this thing started that is connected back up we have no fuel leaks so far we have the battery connected back up. Ignition system should be working. I pulled out the choke and this choke at least moved all the way. This one did not, but we know about that. So let's crank it over, see what happens. I think maybe we can dribble a little bit of fuel down each card. It's just, you know, a couple drops down each. I think I'm going to pull a plug and see if they're wet and see what's going on. Smells a little bit of fuel, but really not much at all. Just gonna put a little bit more fuel through it and see what happens. So at least the plugs weren't soaked, or at least that one wasn't soaked. A little bit more this time. that long because it's just a fuel up here but it ran okay I'm gonna turn off the ignition disconnect the battery and I want to see if we've got any fuel up here yet or um, I doubt it but we'll see or maybe we'll just dribble a little bit more fuel into it actually first and let us see 
it comes into life once more. But that sounded really nice. least some life out of it. Maybe it ran off a little bit of fuel I got in there. Um, yeah, but we will this time disconnect the battery, pull that line, see if anything has come out of it. Otherwise, force feed some fuel into the carbs again and see how it goes. But it ran. You know what? When I remove that, a little dribble of fuel actually came out, or a couple squirts. So maybe the pump is starting to do something. But let us fill up the fluff holes again. Okay, we have a slight leakage. A slight leakage there. So maybe there actually is fuel in the set bowls. I think there could be. Interesting. Let's do the old screwdriver tap on them. I mean, we definitely should take these apart and clean them out. But uh, I did want to fire into life. We'll, we'll hook all this back up. Dry up a slight amount of fuel sitting here on top of the walls. Should we hook up the battery and try again? It's weird, it's just as if the throttle isn't doing... Oh! Throttle linkage has unhooked itself somehow. Let's have a look at that. That's why I thought the throttle wasn't doing anything. Let's set up my little light here. Okay, I'm gonna need two hands for that. But you see the throttle cable there? Completely disconnected from the throttle linkage. And that's just probably because we don't have the air filter box here, which is the return spring goes to. We'll connect it up and see if we can get it working, sort of. Got that hooked back up, so let's try it again.
got the smoke in there from the exhaust manifold, and we do have a carb that is, that is definitely flowing over. That is that gasket that I had apart, so we'll connect, let's connect the battery. But uh, yeah, I'd say it ran. I saw good oil pressure on the gauge. We're definitely, definitely getting somewhere. It lives, the old land crab is back into life. And that B-series sounded really sweet when I could rev it up there a little bit. Definitely carburation issues. I mean, it doesn't help having jets stuck and things and it just wasn't happy. But it did fire up there when I gave it full choke and you know, it's really cold. It's just about three degrees today. So that made sense. But um, definitely some adjustment needed on the fast idle as well because it didn't want to idle up as I pulled it. And it seems like it's not adjusted that much for that. But a lot of things need to be done with the carbs. But if you want to see more on this car, Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification because in a week's time we'll have part two on this video. This is my part of my Christmas special this year. My Christmas special for this year is just giving you guys some extra content for the end of November and all of December on some various different things which necessarily aren't connected to what I usually do on channel which is old Jags. But like I said, next year we are going to transition a little bit on this channel and start working on other British classics as well. Like this Wolseley. And another one, I've actually purchased a British Classic that is not a Jag that you guys will see pretty soon on the channel. But, you know, so far it's running. Next time it should run even better. So until next time, I'm Adam. This was Luma for Classic. I'll see you soon.